Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. I am the content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me today is a, uh, we, we got a newbie. This is this is my friend, Jonathan Lackey. He is a seminarian at St. Louis. How are you doing today, seminarian I'm Lackey? Doing, I'm doing absolutely awesome. How are you? I'm doing okay. Um, it's impressive that you're doing awesome because I, I know that uh, term's got to be uh, coming to a close here. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the, so the, the post, so So in seminary, right at St. Louis, we've got semesters. And so they're divided, obviously, into quarters. And so you have reading week, which is a a very academic sounding way to say fall break. And once fall break happens, that last quarter is kind of brutal. It's it is. um, It's a lot of work, but it's 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 a lot of fun too. Um, you know, learning a lot of stuff. And uh, but yeah, it's. The weather gets colder and the work piles up. That's how it works. You, you, I'm sure all of the potential church workers are just terrified of this. So let's let's talk a little bit about seminary life because oh, yeah, sure, sure. that's just it. Everybody, everybody sort of has their their preconceived notions, and uh, every pastor is sort of we talk about seminary with with this both love and hate relationship because at, at one hand it it's it's this wonderful time in our lives where we we learn all this stuff, and on the other, it's it's it is work. Um, so like <laughs> yeah. let's. Let's maybe go from the beginning. All right, um, let's do it. How'd you how'd you get roped into this mess? Okay, so how I got roped into this mess, um, we're gonna have to go from the beginning, as it were. Yeah. Uh, how I got roped into this mess, and I, I say mess, it's it's not a mess, but uh, how I got roped into it. So I was not originally Lutheran. I grew up Roman Catholic, actually, and I met at the beginning of at the end of high school, beginning of college. I met Molly, who's now my wife. And uh, that's a spoiler for you, but uh, you know, there it is. So I met her and she was Lutheran and I had never heard much about Lutheranism. I'd heard a tiny, tiny bit about Lutheranism from Catholic confirmation, which as you can imagine was not incredibly uh, positive. (laughs) And then I'd heard about it when we briefly touched on the Reformation in ninth grade history class. But other than that, Lutheranism, what the heck is it? So I met Molly and she said, well, you're not really happy as a Roman Catholic. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm not really. I wasn't. I wasn't very practicing. I didn't take it incredibly seriously. And so she said, why don't you take a look at this? And so she sent me a bunch of Higher Things videos, um, reading material, Spirituality of the Cross by Jean Edward Veith, which everybody should read, even if you've been Lutheran your whole life, probably especially if you've been Lutheran your whole life. That was the, one of the first books I read as uh, I was brought into the church, too. Exactly. And isn't it awesome? I think it's now in its third edition. So please read it. Um, And so I read that and I did a lot. You know, I read all that stuff and I got to thinking about it. And I'm like, well, you know, I've kind of seen the truth. And if I turn my back on it now, that isn't good. And so I became Lutheran, was received into the church um, 2016, spring 2016, maybe. Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I hope they're listening to this. They're wonderful people. Um, And then after a couple of years, I was looking, you know, I was in college, right? And I was looking at things that I wanted to do, maybe where I wanted my life to go. And nothing was really um, jumping out at me. You know, I'd been on a tentative track to do some kind of criminal justice work. And, you know, that's fine. But it wasn't really my thing. But I had kept devouring theology stuff. And I love going to church, obviously, um, you know, gospel, very new to me. And I kept devouring all this theology stuff. And I think it was Molly's dad said, you know, if you really like reading this, maybe you should look at seminary. And I said, you know what, maybe I should look at seminary. So I talked with my home pastor, Pastor John Bussman. um, And because by that time, I kind of transferred my membership up to St. Paul's and Coleman. And so I talked, sorry, talked to him. And he said, well, I went to Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, and either seminary is going to be a fantastic choice. So, and I I completely agree with that. So let's get this out of the way, this like fiction Mm -hmm. about one is better than the other, or one is going to be more this, and one is going to be more that. Yeah, get out of here. Uh, They're both, they're both fine places to work. I'm going to tell you later why I like Concordia Seminary. So he went to Concordia Seminary, and he said, I really know the professors, and I really enjoyed my time there. And I think he took me on a kind of unofficial visit because he was doing some doctorate of ministry work. And so he came up here. I came with him and we looked around campus. We talked to a lot of the professors and it was great. And I said, oh, I think this is really nice. So I eventually applied. I was accepted. 
and I here I am at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, Missouri. I think that's a really sort of important story, just in the fact that it's kind of normal. Um, and, and I can kind of relate uh, in that I, I'm here. I, I went to Fort Wayne, again, a wonderful seminary because my pastor made me go. Um, we, we talk about like being called into the ministry and on call day. So you're you're about like six months out, five months out that's from. Kind of, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. From, from less than 200 being days, called so. into the ministry. But but right now um, you're here because people in your life thought this might be a good place for you. And yeah. that's a good enough reason. You don't need to sort of feel the, the longing heart. But if there's people in your life, especially a pastor saying you might want to think about it. Yeah. Check it out and, and explore both campuses and, and see what they have to offer. Um, for, from there, it, it gets to be, well, it gets to be your life. Tell me, tell me a, a day in the life of the seminarian. What, what's okay. your life like there? So a day in the life of a seminarian. So every day of the week, obviously, have different classes. Um, I'm going to go with with today's what what it was like for me today. So fourth year, you can you have a little bit more control over your schedule. Uh, what that meant was I did not want to take any eight a.m.s, so I didn't. And so I woke up. And I, you know, got ready, walked over to campus because I live off campus, not very far off campus. I'm married, if you can't tell. And if my conversation thus far hasn't clued you in. Um, So my wife and I live off campus and the. So I walked up, I walk over, I come to the library and have a cup of coffee. You know, if there's any reading I need to catch up on. Uh, talk with some of my friends who are also in here, kind of the library, which I'm actually in the library right now. This is kind of one of the classrooms in the library that's empty. And the library is kind of a central place for a lot of people to gather, professors, students, you know, it's just a good place. Um, So, and then at 9.30 is chapel. And chapel is the highlight of my day, every single day. Um, Actually, I have a lot of highlights. I love this place. But chapel is easily one of the best parts of my day. The bell rings, we go over to chapel, and we go through the morning offices. Um, So the current like weekly chapel schedule, which varies slightly, but it's Monday Responsive Prayer 2, Tuesday and Thursday Matins, Wednesday is a divine service, and then Friday is prayer and preaching. So today we had Matins, um, and Pastor Benjamin Ball from St. Paul Hamill was the one preaching, and then we did Matins, we come out, there's coffee after chapel. Um, professors and students just get together there, drink coffee, just talk, you know, catch up. And then I go to class. I have a preaching class right now uh, in that block following chapel with Dr. David Peter, expository preaching, which is very fun and wonderful. Um, Lunch, then I have, on Tuesdays, I have a thing that's called Formation Lab, where you have a group of seminarians from your class and you're paired with a particular professor for all four of your years. And so you meet on this Tuesday right after lunch block and the formation lab is, so if you're a pastor, if you know a pastor, you're familiar with kind of like circuit meetings. Yeah. You know about that. So the formation lab is kind of that same structure where it's, where it's people coming together and you are doing casuistry, you know, talking about things that are on your mind Um, perhaps there's a topic that the professor would like to talk to you about as it relates to pastoral ministry. Um, Dr. Gerhard Bode is my professor for that, and I love it. And then we go from there uh, to last block of classes, which for me right now is ethics with Dr. Joel Bierman, which is just a phenomenal class. We just wrapped up uh, three days looking at Diedrich Bonhoeffer and his writings, or Bonhoeffer, I forget, Um, but it's wonderful. And so it's a full day, as you can tell. Um, and, but it is, it is so formative and it is so wonderful. I, I love it here. I love being here. I love learning from these professors. I mean, we have a absolutely world-class faculty and it's just wonderful. Um, it's, it's a, it's a start to finish thing. And so we talk about them like they're full days, but they're days that you end up usually walking out of with more energy than you put in. I know that there's work that goes into it, but you're surrounded by people that, that uh, become family and, and you're surrounded by stuff that, that you love there. There's always more to learn there. Yeah. There's always people who are excited about the things that we're excited about. Yeah. Um, it, it really is just a, a, a foundational time. That's going to start to, to form you up so that you can, you can head out into, um, into the ministry. Yeah. Um, what's, what's your favorite part about seminary? You, you kind of said chapel, but uh, oh, so, cha- yeah. specific. so there's chapel, but it's also just the community here. Hmm. And I, I want to touch on that because we, we usually throw around the word community 
for a lot of different things, some of which it doesn't apply, but the community at the seminary. So if you've been to undergrad, especially if you've been to like a bigger school, sometimes it seems like, okay, I'm sitting here in this lecture in this hall with a hundred plus other people. The professor doesn't know who I am. These other students don't know who I am. I see the back of their head. Maybe I'll, they'll look at me when they're trying to look out the window. And overall, there's just, there's nothing binding you there other than the fact that you all go to this one school and have this one professor, right? But when you come to the seminary, by virtue of it being a smaller, but also Christian institution that shares a confession, um, the community instantly becomes more tightly knit. And so you can, the professors will talk with the students and socialize with the students and the students will socialize with each other across classes. You know, fourth years will talk to first years and first years talk to second years and all this stuff. It, it's not, it's not stratified. It's not people looking down their nose at you. It is this wonderful Christian community, this city of God, as St. August, St. Augustine might put it. Um, and everybody is supporting each other in their difficult times. This is going to sound really bad, but if something bad is going to happen to you, let's no, hope you have it happen to you at seminary, um, because instantly the community will just grab you and lift you up and support you and pray for you and do anything and everything they can with a, with a fervor I haven't seen anywhere else, truly. Yeah. Uh, it is absolutely wonderful. So it's the community, it's the people. I like it. What other side of the coin then? Uh, what's, what's, what's the worst part about seminary? Um, work sometimes piles up. Um, work sometimes piles up because obviously you're doing important work at the seminary. You know, you're preparing to be a pastor in God's church. And that is a, that is a heavy task. I, I will not lie to you and say that seminary is easy. It, it isn't easy, um, but it is worthwhile. And, you know, work sometimes piles up, you get a little bit of a crunch, but it's never hopeless. You, you are never left high and dry. If, if, if something's going on, professors always work with you there because they're, well, number one, all of our professors are pastors. Like, like that is number one. All of our professors are pastors. They've all been there to seminary. They've also all been in the parish. And so they, they're very pastoral. So even though that's difficult, it isn't impossible. It isn't insurmountable and do not lose hope on that. Awesome. Um, so what else, if there were, if there were two things that somebody should know if they, they sort of wondered what a seminary is, wondered whether or not that this could be a life for them. What were sort of the, the two things you would want to tell them? Um, so if you are, if you, if you think you want to discern a, discern a vocation in the seminary, which is a great thing to do, um, ask yourself a couple of questions. Um, how social are you? And, you know, everybody's like, oh, I talk to people. Well, okay. But can you talk to anybody? right? Because deal, when you're in the church, you are dealing with a huge variety of people, um, you know, with young, old, people of all races, people of all monetary statuses. I mean, you're dealing with a huge variety of people. Um, sometimes you're dealing with people, a lot of the times you're dealing with people in the worst moment of their lives. Yeah. Um, you're seeing people in the hospital, you're seeing people dying. Uh, you're seeing people in counseling. You're also, but you're also rejoicing with people when when good things are happening to them, when they're getting married, when they're getting their kid baptized, you know, when their kids are going through confirmation, when you're giving somebody communion for the first time or assisting with that, right? If you're a seminarian, you assist with that stuff. Um, you have to have a heart for people. You really do. Um, and that that doesn't mean that you have to be an extrovert either. I'm um, oh, like no, I'm no, no. introverted, um, no, and yeah. I can talk to people, but I also I just I take some rest later. And, and so don't think like it unless you have to be surrounded with people anytime, or if you just need some alone time. Those are yeah. the, the thing. But you, you're right. It's it's a people job. It, it's yeah. it's a vocation. It's a calling that that serves souls. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, <laughs> you have to have a love of reading, and that's like oh well, duh. But I'll unpack this a little bit. So you're obviously reading a lot for class, um, but you also, for me, after Vicarage, I had this, this like spark ignite where I was like, I got to get, I, I got to read a lot more stuff. And so I started checking stuff out of the library left and right, just devouring it. Um, but one of the things that a pastor does is read and the pastor should be reading continuously, even when he's not in seminary, obviously the Bible, obviously the confessions. Um, 
all these other great works, you know, dogmatics, um, commentaries. I see you've got a couple of blue Concordia commentaries on your shelf back there. Um, all of these things, you know, you're, you're continuously reading because you're continuously learning and having that attitude of I am always being formed and I am always ready to be taught even after I get the piece of paper that says I've got a call to blank and blank church in, you know, wherever USA, you can't shut it off there. You got to have this learning attitude. Yeah, that's fantastic. Jonathan Lackey is a, a fourth year seminary. That means he's almost done. Uh, the Lord sustained you in your studies. I look forward to seeing you out here. Thank you.